my man, the most stable genius in America, has been killing it lately on uh, Truth Social. <clears throat> I'm not doing the voice for this whole thing. Now that midterms are over, and a success, News Corp, which is Fox, the Wall Street Journal, and the no longer great New York Post, is all in for Governor Ron DeSanctimonious, an average Republican governor with great public relations who didn't have to close up his state but did, unlike other Republican governors whose overall numbers for a Republican were just average, middle of the pack, including COVID, and who has the advantage of sh sunshine, because the there's sun in Florida, where people from badly run states of North would go no matter who the governor was, just like I did. Ron came to me in desperate shape in 2017. He was politically dead. Do the voice. He was politically dead, losing in a landslide to a very good agriculture commissioner, Adam Putnam, who was loaded up with cash and great poll numbers. Ron had low approval, bad polls, and no money. <laughs> but he said that if I would endorse him, he could win. I didn't know Adam, so I said, Let's give it a shot, Ron. And <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. It's too much. When I endorsed him, it was as though to use a bad term, a nuclear weapon went off. Years later, they were the exact words Adam Putnam used in describing Ron's endorsement. He said, I went from having it made with no competition to immediately getting absolutely clobbered after your endorsement. Then I got Ron by the star of the Democrat Party, Andrew Gillum, who was later revealed to be a crackhead. I know this is like half incoherent, but I swear to God I'll synthesize this soon. By having two massive rallies with tens of thousands of each one, I also fixed his campaign, which had completely fallen apart. I was all in for Ron, and he beat Gillum. But after the race, when the votes were being stolen by the corrupt election process in Broward County, and Ron was going down tens of thousands of votes a day, along with now Senator Rick Scott, I sent in the FBI and the U.S. attorneys, and the ballot theft immediately ended just prior to them running out of the votes necessary to win. I stopped his election from being stolen. Uh, in this, he Trump seems to be indicating that he used his power as the president to fix a win for uh, uh, for for uh, the governor. So that's something, you know. Okay. And now Ron DeSanctimonious is playing games. The fake news asks him if he's going to run if President Trump runs. And he says, I'm only focused on the governor's race, not looking into the future. Well, in terms of loyalty and class, that's really not the right answer. This is just like 2015 and 2016, immediate assault collusion. When Fox News bought me to the end until I won, and then they couldn't have been nicer or more supportive. The Wall Street Journal loved low energy Jeb Bush and a succession of other people as they rapidly disappeared from sight were fi finally falling in line with me after I easily knocked them out one by one. We're in exactly the same position now. They will keep coming after us, MAGA, but ultimately we will win. Put America first and make America great again. Okay, so we have a truly, truly wacky... I'm jebbing very hard right now. Yeah, we, we, we have some, some wacky, wacky behavior here. I've talked about this a little, but I really want to expand on it because this is as um, uh, this is as good an opportunity as any to really, really dig into this problem here. Okay, so look, when fascists are trying to take over a government, as they love to do, you know that's their favorite thing. Uh, I like Pez and video games. Aut autistic people love trains. Fascists love destroying democracies, and. The, the process of achieving that goal, you know, involves, on a very basic level, it involves gaining popularity and then taking advantage of existing popularity to bring the hammer down. Donald Trump was the guy to energize the Republican Party. They needed somebody like him. They needed somebody to really cut through the phony suit and tie bullshit and just openly, directly, unambiguously represent every reactionary impulse that guides fascist decision making. You know, they needed a like they 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 needed someone fronting that right up there. The problem is people who are good at energizing and people who are good at you know, well-coordinated, disciplined efforts to deconstruct a democracy, these two are not always the same people. Take a look at Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell is perhaps more than anyone else currently in office responsible for the, you know, the, the, the weakening of our democratic institutions. But nobody, nobody in the world 
is going to go out to a rally and lose their mind or, or go and martyr themselves as a right-wing militiaman over Mitch McConnell. Nobody in the world. This guy has done more to undermine our democracy than almost any other ever. But he could never do a Jan 6. He could never organize a Charlottesville. He just does not have that skill set, you know? So right here we find the, the contradiction. We find the antagonism. Ron DeSantis is the best pick for the Republican Party in their continued effort to undermine our democracy. He's smarter than Trump. He has more discipline than Trump. He's more controllable than Trump. It's just the better pick. Donald Trump, however, was successful in energizing the party. And for that reason, my man Trump is not going down without a fight. I mean, he's got, the, he's got so much backing in the Republican constituency, and he's too much of an egotist to ever give this up. So he's going to, I mean, there's going to be damage. Yeah, the Republican Party doesn't want Trump anymore, but Trump just wants applause. This is a very delicate situation for the Republican strategists. I'm telling you, I'm t I, I know this. From the bottom of my heart, I know this, okay? Right now, Republican strategists are quietly praying he dies in his sleep before it gets any worse. That's what they want. They do not want a primary, uh, a 2024 primary between DeSantis and Trump. They don't want it because DeSantis can't go that hard against Trump because Trump is beloved by his party. Donald Trump will go as hard as he wants to against DeSantis because he doesn't care about anything or anybody besides himself. I don't even think Donald Trump cares that much about fascism. I don't think he could define it. I don't think he knows what it is. I think that Donald Trump is just sort of latently reactionary and extremely narcissistic. And just the best way as a narcissist who is reactionary to get attention is just to, you know, whatever, feed into the loop. You know, I whatever. I, I think he likes his tendies. I think he likes his chicken nuggies. I think that's what gets him up out of bed. And hey, same man, but I'm not a former president. Ron DeSantis does not care for nuggies, okay? He cares for uh, genocide, uh, white ethno states. So, you know, <laughs> God, I, I, this is really bad for them, you know? Donald Trump saying that DeSantis lacks loyalty and class. Uh, Donald Trump saying, like, you're nothing without me, all that sort of stuff. We'll see how this plays out, but I think the, the primary Republican project of the next couple of years is going to be them making an effort to drag their constituency away from Trump and towards DeSantis. And that is probably going to involve, hilariously enough, Republicans suddenly starting to care about Trump shit in ways they haven't before. I anticipate an uptick and Republicans suddenly, seriously, you know, discussing his relationship with Epstein, his infidelity, the terrible relationships that he has with his family, his weakness as a candidate, you know, all the corruption and so on. Republicans are going to start, I, I'm telling you, it's going to happen. He's going to slowly get weaned in on by the GOP establishment because they're going to try to drag their constituency away. I don't think it's going to work that well, to be honest with you, for two reasons. First of all, Dyer Fox brings up a good point. A strong, not majority, but a strong portion of the Republican Party is like QAnon nutters, okay? These people will die before they stop supporting Trump. These are like, these are ideologically Trumpist, you know? They don't just like Trump, they're in. Those people, I don't think, are going to just move over when the GOP tells them, you know? I do not anticipate that. It's, it's too much of a cult, you know? These, these cults are dangerous. It's, it's, they're, they're, it's, it's risky, you know, cultivating that kind of... Cultivating kind of behavior. Um, <laughs> that's one. And two, you know, no matter how hard the Republican establishment guns for it, I don't think you can get a lot of Republicans to care about the bad things that Trump has done because I just don't think they care about bad people. If they did, why would they be Republican? You know? Poll right now is blaming DeSantis and claiming he's in on the conspiracy. It's going to be really, really difficult preserving Trump's um, constituency in the GOP and moving it over to DeSantis. In fact, in fact, I'm willing to, um, I'm willing to commit, uh, commit to this even more. I'm willing to say, I actually think that Donald, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I, I, I sincerely mean this. Right now, insofar as he represents an obstacle to GOP um, 
solidarity. I legitimately think Trump is the biggest obstacle to American fascism. I actually believe that. It's not Biden. It's not the Democratic Party. It's Trump's ability to sink the ship that he's on. I mean that. I mean that. Trump is on the wrong ship. He wants to be on the wrong ship. Trump's on SS fascism over there, but he's got a bomb vest. Okay? You know? My man, my man over here, I'm not, it's not a matter of agreeing with him or anything like that. I'm just saying he's over there and like the responsible bikers of Los Angeles streets, he has strapped propane tanks to his, uh, to, to his person. You know, if a car hits them, it's both their problems now. I will see. I mean, I can only, I can only hope, right? If nothing else, it'll be very funny. It'll be great, uh, great content. Why don't they accept DeSantis as VP? Because they can't have Trump involved anymore. Trump is too corrupt and unstable. He's not smart enough to fully facilitate uh, the death of our democracy. You know what I mean? Um, we don't, the, the society that we live in is stable enough that the Republican Party can't just like do a military coup, you know? It has to be this protracted, like months or years long siphoning away from our democratic institutions, followed by really well-coordinated efforts to replace people in key positions. Trump is not committed enough to that process uh, he would probably blow the whole thing up. I mean, he might, he might still. Why not have DeSantis as VP? No, that's what I'm saying. If Trump is in charge, like, that is a degree of instability they don't want to contend with, you know? Uh, it's, it's, it's a risk. It's a big risk. And he's got a huge ego. Yeah, that's true, you know? Not to mention, look at what happened to the, um, the last, uh, vice president under Trump, right? You know, it's, uh, Kerry Lake is siding with Trump on Crowder. You guys need to keep an eye out for this, all right? This is going to be one of the big kicks right here. This is the big line. This is where it's going to happen, folks. I'm telling you right now, this, we need to be watching this shit like a hawk. And hey, you know what? I'm not ashamed to say it. Critical support to Trump in his narcissistic rampage across the, the, the breadth of like GOP uh, electability, you know? I'm hoping more people side with Trump than with DeSantis because the establishment will be pushing DeSantis. The more people independently pushing for Trump, the greater a resistance they're going to find in that. What I think they're doing is slow rolling our victory. They want to take the air out of this movement and they can't do it because it's a movement and we the people are fed up and we're not going to slow down. We're not going to let them take the fire out of our belly. And so they slow roll the results. You know, Ron DeSantis goes out, gives his big speech, and then they want to make it look like the Trump Republicans don't have a chance. We do. We're going to win. I'm 100% sure of that. I think that Blake may even win with the look of what is left to be counted. Listen to that language. The Trump Republicans. Carrie Lake here is using language that indicates that she sees the Trump-picked candidates as a distinct group within the GOP. That's really good for us. See, the ability for the Republican Party to fall behind Donald Trump in 2016 was one of their greatest strengths. But it might now, like we might be getting the, the, the kickback from that, you know? Um, their, their sort of immediate strongman like fall in line instinct, you know, the innate submissiveness of the fascist might end up playing against them here. We'll be paying as much attention to that as is reasonably possible in the coming years. Uh, you know, what are th two years, what, however much time we get, you know, um, because it is, um, critically important. Do you think Biden should run in 2024? I don't, man, I don't know. The Democrats don't have any good lineups for 2024. I hate Kamala Harris. Biden is literally a, 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 a lich commanding a skin puppet from, from a, a sepulcher, okay? He's ancient. You know, are there other people? Maybe. I don't know. But like, we will need an energetic candidate. God, I hope. God, I hope. What about Gavin Newsom? I don't like Gavin Newsom. I don't like any of these. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Listen, just do a Barack Obama. I don't care. Third term, whatever. The Constitution doesn't matter anymore. Just do Gavin. Yeah, because it's, it's California. It's homophonia. Come on. Just do Obama. I don't know. Whatever. Constitution. Who cares? Why not Nina Turner? Uh, really? A <laughs> couple of reasons why not Nina Turner. Gabe Newell? Yeah, Gabe Newell. Why, why not? Trump would 100% run uh, third party. If Trump did end up like running third party after like 
getting ousted from the uh, Republican primary. That would be like the best. I would watch me watch me turn heel on my principles in a nanosecond. You want me to be pro uh, rank choice voting? Nope. I'm pro post-2024 rank choice voting. I am extremely pro first-past-the-post voting in that particular election right there. Absolutely. 100%. God, that would be funny. Oh, my God. Oh, he'd split it right down the middle. Like a goddamn credit card. Why do your presidents have to be so old, Vosh? They don't have to be that old. It's just power tends to consolidate over time. I thought you liked Nina. Yeah, that doesn't mean she's presidential material. Are you kidding? There's no way in hell Nina Turner could possibly, like, get enough of the Democratic Party behind her. What the f***? Why not Turner? <sighs> okay. Quick reminder to the f***ing troglodytes in chat, okay? How much you like someone and how good of a presidential candidate they would make are not exactly the same question, okay? Come on, think for a second. Really think. Yet Nina Turner's been like borderline anti-democratic party, like not third party posting explicitly, I don't think, but like, yeah, no, come on. Will I run for Department of Health and Safety? Yeah, sure. It's, it's my life dream, basically. What about Kanye? Yeah, Kanye could be a good Democratic lead. That's my final answer. I wonder if DeSantis will ultimately take VP. No, 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 no. Black Poppy. And this is, this is my highest guarantee. Trump and DeSantis can't run at the same ticket. It is not possible. It is not possible. It cannot happen. Which is great. Because that means there's gonna... <laughs> it means they gotta fight. Oh, God. I mean, I'm glad because why can't they? Because Donald Trump is too self-centered and too much of an egotist. The Republican establishment wants to give credit to what Ron DeSantis has done because they see him as more stable and easier to control than Trump, which means that the establishment would be making an effort to prioritize celebrating anything DeSantis did over Trump. They wouldn't like the fact that Trump won, that he was so unstable, so combative, so argumentative, and that would read not only in the way DeSantis is treated, but in the way the media behaves broadly. That would foster discontent between Trump and DeSantis. Donald Trump backed a group of rioters who were threatening to hang his last VP, and Pence was a bitch up until the end. What do you think Trump is going to do with a vice president who he feels the media is openly picking over him? You fucking kidding me? They'd be at each other's throats day one. They, they would... F Donald Trump would physically be throwing, like, candy plates at him. No way. No way. No way in hell. It's fascinating how they used Trump and discarded him in the end. Well, yeah, I mean, Trump was never smart enough to be like, uh, like an operative. You know what I mean? Some people, th there are people who rise. This is, this is kind of like the, the, the ultimate fate of most populists, you know? Populists can be good as rising stars, but populists tend to grind against existing institutional power. And like, Institutional power in the GOP goes back a long way and is backed by a lot of money, far more so than Trump has. So he, he might rep them, he might be their spokesman, their face, but the actual body is, 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 is beyond his control. Um, you know, it, it would have been exactly the same with, with Bernie Sanders, you know, though probably to a somewhat lesser extent in some ways and to a greater extent than others. So there would be some, some variance there, you know, there's always, there's always nuance to how this stuff plays out. But Trump isn't aware of that? No, Trump is not aware of that. I don't think Trump is smart enough to understand that. I feel like, personally, Trump probably thinks that he's, like, the guy in control. You know what I mean? Like, it, like Trump has probably been under the impression, like, oh yeah, I'm the president, or I, I was the president, and I was, like, the main guy. The people come out to see me at the rallies. I'm in control. But it's not necessarily true, you know? That's why uh, Adolf Hitler had his Night of the Long Knives, you know? Ultimately, that's how the rising populist consolidates power um, to oust the institutional power holders, right? During the Night of the Long Knives, Hitler and his operatives killed a ton of, like, possible competing, you know, like, uh, uh, forces within the government. Um, and, and, that was how, and that was how the rising populist Adolf dealt with institutional power under his government. He... Killed them all. So we'll see if Trump pulls that one off, but I doubt it. Bosh, it's cute how you com um how you comprehend how much you cute how you comprehend how much you personally like a candidate is meaningless, then you shit all over Gavin Newsom. Yes. Fully agree. Alright, moving on. Cut the segment. 
Editors, leave that one in. Leave that last one in. Huh? Oh, I'll check when I check. So it's probably fine. How do you see Dems versus Republicans in terms of foreign policy and their relation to institutions like the UN? Um, Republicans are more isolationist because most of our allies abroad are liberal democracies, which Republicans don't like. Uh, so Republicans would just like pal around with people like Putin and, um, I don't know, uh, Bolsonaro. I mean, the Saudis. <laughs> yeah, like they, they would pal around with other autocrats for the most part. Or yeah, Orban, Viktor Orban. Yeah, that's a given. Yeah. They literally had their last, like, fucking child prostitute party over at Orban's place. The beautiful saddies. Yeah. Probably delicious booger. Oh, for sure, Chase R. Lewis. Though I think they would go farther than that if they could. Pigeon, do you want to star in today's stream? Do you want to be a guest? <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, she zip. Look at that. Look at her do a little hop. Look at that. She likes watching Lizard from on top of the tank. Also, when the stream's not on, these two lights are on. I only have them off when I'm streaming. And she likes being near the heat lamp because it's warm. Does she get cold? Yeah, she's a hairless cat. But we have tons of spots set up around the house to warm her. Um, we, uh, you know, she'll she'll yelp or indicate to us if she wants to be put under a blanket. Uh, she has sweaters, like 50 of them, piled over there. Um, there are heat lamps on when I'm not streaming. There's a heater on downstairs. There's tons of places she can go if she wants to warm up, you know. Um, she's zipping. She do be zipping. Yeah, my PC is a heating pad. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I have um, I have cushions on top of my PC right now to the detriment of my heat dissipation because she loves sitting on top of the computer and just um, absorbing the warmth. And there is plenty of warmth. Trump lost his Ben Garrison support. Well, Ben Garrison only Ben Garrison draws on commission. Um, he'll he'll say anything. However, this is funny. I do I do like how Ben Garrison has traditionally drawn Trump as very muscular, but now that DeSantis has the lightning bolts of popularity. Now he's quite muscular, you see. And now, now Donald Trump is, is very physically unimpressive in the background, though still far skinnier than he is in real life. Yeah, femboy Trump over there. Oh my god, he's so, he's so lith. So smooth. The SS lightning bolts of popularity? Yeah, well, that is what they're fighting over, right? Those bolts are a Nazi dog whistle? I mean, they might be. I don't think Ben Garrison is a Nazi. Nah, I don't think Ben Garrison's a Nazi. I think that Ben Garrison is just like, uh, like, like, like this guy. This guy was voting Reagan before Reagan even existed. I don't, I don't know. I, I just think he's retarded. Yeah. Oh yeah, like stealing the thunder. Oh yeah, that that's the reference. He's stealing the thunder, but this is lightning. That doesn't. Okay. Oh, it says that right down there at the bottom. I'm so stupid. DeSantis steals Trump's thunderbolts. I was looking at femboy Trump and beefy. Wonk DeSantis. You can't visualize stealing thunder? Well, then maybe go for a different goddamn metaphor. How do you draw thunder? You kind of have to draw lightning? Yeah, well, then go for a different metaphor. Don't use a metaphor that involves a material that is literally invisible. Thunder. Okay, whatever. Stealing the spotlight? Yeah, stealing the spotlight. Like, DeSantis could have had, like, ropes around studio lights that he would have pulled towards him away from Trump, and he'd be, like, bathed in light, and Donald Trump would be fuming and confused in the dark. Whatever. You should know Garrison labels everything. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. That'd be more visually interesting. But lightning implies thunder. Shut up! Also, you don't really hear thunder if you're right next to lightning. Like, the, the noise everyone associates with thunder is when you're away from lightning. If you're right next to lightning, you just hear a loud crack. Which isn't... I don't really... That doesn't feel like thunder, really. That's just like the crack. Um, thunder is like a rumbling, but that's because it's in the distance, you know? It definitely resonates. Oh, for sure, yeah. You feel it, though? Yeah. But I wouldn't call that thunder. Like, okay, if you guys were like, hey, what does thunder sound like? You would hear like, like that. But if you're right next to where it strikes, it's like a resonant crack. The, the, the thunder rumbling noise is because it's m miles away. The mic didn't pick it up? Okay, whatever. So, okay, all right, whatever. I have a good mic gate. Okay, 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 okay. What if we, what if we talked about politics? What if we did that? Ha ha. What if we, ha ha, talked politics? Ha ha. Wow, wow. Ooh, ow, 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 ow. Give me one moment. Let me get these links. Wow, that would be crazy. My likes on Twitter have been split pretty well lately between like Chainsaw Man and also the death of democracy. So that's cool. I'm, I'm cool with that like juxtaposition. Why do I like so much shit on Why do I spend any time on Twitter? I'm so stupid. I should stop doing that. Why do I choose to do that? You should never be on Twitter. 
I make money from Twitter because people follow me there and therefore they see my streams and so on. I, downstream, I make money from Twitter. And I shouldn't be on Twitter. You shouldn't be on Twitter. Do you guys make money? No, you don't. Uh, not from Twitter. So don't, you definitely shouldn't be on there. Stop. Okay? Hold on. There's one specific link that I'm looking for. It, it has to do with, um, it has to do with people being dumb and gay, which is kind of a running theme on my streams. Why? I, I normally like stuff thinking like, oh, I'll come back to this on stream because I, it's in my likes now. So I can just look at it. I always delude myself into thinking, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'll get these all up before I start stream. But I never do. Did I not like these? Did I not even use bookmarks? Bookmark, bookmarks, 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 Jesus Christ, bookmarks. God, here we go. Okay, found it. Thank you. Hey, first of all, I want everyone to pour one out to Gregory Harden II. You may have remembered that I talked to him a couple of times, and he's also been active on Twitter and in my subreddit. He was not able to win his race, but that's okay, because he has a warrior's heart. Well, the results of the election last night were not what we needed. I'm still extremely proud of the work that I and all my supporters put into the campaign. The 3,367 people who voted for me. State of Oklahoma. My favorite part about running to be state representative of House District 26 was getting to meet new people, hearing their concerns, and with that I also learned more about the history of Shawnee and Potawatomi County. That is something I'll always cherish regardless of the disappointing outcome of this race. I'm also proud of the fact that I'm the first black person to be the Democratic nominee for the Oklahoma State House District 26. Hell yeah. And he's only 24, you know? So much time. So much time. So much stuff to do. Yeah, it is a great learning experience. Absolutely. Anyway, we honor our warriors. Thank you. I think the, the, dis the House District that he's in is quite small. Here. Oklahoma House. No, State House. State House District 26. What are the um, 7,000 to 3,367? Gotcha. I think that's dope. Do, isn't, this, um, isn't this normally like a red area? I mean, you can kind of tell that it's a red area because of how it, just where it is, right? It's in Oklahoma and the county itself is shaped like Oklahoma. It's double Oklahoma. Like this is, this county is literally Oklahoma squared, you know? We're not exactly talking a progressive stronghold here. Did you see this? Not only did I see this, we actually talked about it just a little bit ago. The problem is, I don't know what to say about it because um, Donald Trump lies constantly and exaggerates to make himself sound cooler. So he could be admitting to a crime here or he could just be saying stuff. I, it, people might do some investigation following this, and I'm very interested to see what comes of it. But I, in the meantime, like, you know what I mean? It, it's it's like it's like trying to it's like trying to get a criminal confession from a parrot, you know, like to see if the owner did the murders, and you're listening to the parrot, and you're like, um, so they do it, and the parrot's like, ah, kill, and you're like, okay, is that can I arrest off that? Probably not. One mask. Who do you think is more dangerous, Ron DeSantis or Trump? Ron DeSantis and Trump are both two separate dudes who represent two parts in the two-part end democracy plan. Ron DeSantis will be more dangerous than Trump from this point forward. Uh, as of two days ago, Ron DeSantis is now the more dangerous man. And Donald Trump is perhaps the... Um, the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the dark horse underdog hero of this story, uh, his narcissism might end up serving us, uh, in the long run, you know, we'll see, we'll see if, uh, uh, Donnie Trump, uh, you know, declares a, a, a jihad on, um, on DeSantis and takes them both out. We'll see. Yeah, Trump the anti-hero, exactly. Yeah, Trump is like Doom Guy in the sense that, like, he's, Doom Guy isn't really doing anything for good reasons. We're just all kind of lucky that Doom Guy likes killing demons and not humans, and that's like that's it, right? Like at the end, at the end of the day, like we're just we just have to. Ho it's we're we're really just sort of uh, 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 cautiously guiding a cruise missile in the right direction, hopefully. I hope so, Tempest. Doom Guy's creator was recently exposed to being a piece of shit to his worker. By Doom Guy's creator, do you mean one of the original like id software guys from thirty years ago? The original. Doom? The, what's Doom Guy's creator? I don't even... I mean, it's software. I'm sure there are plenty of cunts who work at 
John Romero? I already knew John Romero was an asshole. No, the current lead of id Software. Okay, um, that sucks. Thank you.